Hey folks, Blackcross here, and welcome to another MTAC video that uh, I wanted to go ahead and make. This one is actually involving meeting Little Karibo. So, for those of you who don't know who Little Karibo is, um, he's basically the guy who's been doing the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged series. He's the main guy, he's the one who's in charge, he's the one who does the scripting, and some of the voice acting, and it is, it's really cool to actually have the phrase, I got to meet uh, another content creator. But, um, what, what's funny is that while I don't actually watch a lot of his content uh, before, I will say that now, after like getting the chance to meet him, I want to support him in what he does. Because I feel like, you know, when you finally do meet a content creator, um, and by content creator, I mean like people who do their life's work over the internet and everything like that, and who has made this into their livelihood now, um, it, you, you get this sudden admiration of what they do, and you get to feel like that you understand what they have to go through and stuff. And personally for me, for someone who's been doing this for two years now, I know for a fact that I haven't really went through all of these uh, different phases that a content creator has to face from time to time. And on one hand, I didn't really, didn't think that little Karibo would be that great of a person for me to meet or anything like that. But it wasn't until like the Friday night that we went to, uh, to his panel and everything like that, that I realized that uh, I actually think that this was like the highlight of the convention itself. Well, everything else was cool and stuff, like being able to see all the different cosplayers, get to go to all the different events and stuff. This one was actually probably like the biggest highlight of the weekend itself. Um, Delmar was really excited to actually get to meet him because he's a big fan of his content, actually, uh, compared to me. But uh, I think after now getting a chance to meet him, I do want to actually go back and actually watch uh, through his content and everything. But uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Um, there were other events that we wanted to go to, the first one being that of the opening ceremony. But because of the time that we finally got into our hotel and everything like that, we weren't able to actually attend the uh, opening ceremonies, unfortunately. Uh, we were able to go through another one called Kingdom Hearts Trivia, and I thought that'd be really cool, so I uh, went on ahead uh, to do that. But what's funny is that um, they weren't expecting the crowd that they had gotten. They weren't expecting the crowd, and to be honest, that does make sense for why they wouldn't think that. I think it's because of Kingdom Hearts 3 that's finally getting people back on track of Kingdom Hearts in general. I think that's probably one of the reasons why. And uh, I figured, you know, with me being as informed in Kingdom Hearts, I figured, you know what, this would be perfect for me to test my ability to see if I'm that good or not. But uh, as far as that goes, that was pretty interesting. But then we went to the little Karibo Plus 18 event. And... When we got in there, when we finally got to uh, see them and everything like that for the conference and stuff, they were, let, let's put it this way, because of what they were doing, because uh, of it being a plus 18 and everything like that, they kind of went a little overboard. But to some extent, I guess it was more or less just to have fun, to let loose and everything like that. And it wasn't too awful bad. It was actually really funny, actually. It was very humorous, in all honesty. And coming from somebody who don't know the material, all the material, like I said, I've watched a little bit of it, but not a lot of it, which I want to go back and actually watch all of it now uh, to get some of the jokes and stuff. But it, it was funny, regardless. And then uh, Delmar got a chance to actually uh, go up there and talk to them and everything like that, because they were doing a donation thing for uh, rescuing cats, which I think is a really good cause. Uh, the entire convention was actually... Uh, in sponsor to uh, Saving Cats. I forgot the actual organization itself, but um, you can check them out through MTAC, I imagine. They, they actually had a thing about it. But um, they were doing a, pay, uh, a donation uh, thing for the cats, and if you donated money, you could ask a question or something like that. And Daniel went up there. He was nervous at first. He was really nervous, because this was like the first famous person uh, he and I got to meet, technically. And by Famous, I mean any famous person in general. I'm sure if it was like an actual Hollywood celebrity, it would probably be even ten times even more. But since it was an internet content creator, because this was actually our first one, 
it was, after all, a little bit nervous, you know, and stuff like that. Because even I didn't know how people would react, you know. I only saw from, like, looking at YouTube videos and stuff like that of how they act and how they are and stuff like that. I don't know how they really are. But, uh, they all got to talk to both of them and everything like that. And, uh, he basically, at, he basically showed his, um, uh, love and dedication to them of how much he loved their content and stuff. And, uh, him, him and his wife were there, so they were both... Uh, talking and stuff, and he wanted to get a picture with them, and they said that we would, uh, that they would be honored to do that, uh, after the panel, of course, so obviously, by the time the panel was over with, we were all kind of pushed out, because there was another panel right behind them, that was getting started and everything, so we got to talk to them a little bit outside of the panel, outside the door of the panel, that is, and we got a picture with them, and, uh, this is a picture right now of little Krebo and his wife, and then my brother Delmar, um, and we got to talk to them a little bit. I mean, and by a little bit, I mean like a good five, ten minutes. And that that's a lot, really. That's a lot for any content creator when you're so hugely popular and you've got so many people and you got a big crowd and stuff coming from back and forth and everything like that. And we were kind of like tight packed. But we got a chance to talk to them. And, you know, from the panel to a personal level, there was a big difference, you know. There was like... You know, at the panel, they panned to, like, everybody, but on a personal level, they got to be on the same, uh, wavelength as you, and they were so nice, so kind, so humble. I absolutely love them. They are, like, one of the best people I actually got to meet, uh, and it's just, I, I was so mind-blown. I was like, I had no idea about them, and I feel like an absolute dick. I do. Because, I mean, it's like I said, the only reason why I started this was because I got to see, like, a yin uh, feel towards them. They have, like, this sin presence about them. They feel so calm, and they feel so happy about what they do now. And with the little Creepo, there's no exception. He absolutely loves what he does. And he's just, he's, it's so unbelievably amazing. And I told myself that now, because I actually know that he is, like, an easy person to talk to, that I want to know more about him. I want to know everything that I could. Not so much like details and stuff. But I mean as a personal content creator towards him. Because he does this on YouTube too as well. Uh, but I, I thought to myself. I was like if I ever get a chance to talk to him again. I would like to ask him. And we did actually get. We did get to talk to him again. Um, through his uh, his little booth that he had. He was selling shirts and everything. And Dale got a shirt. And I thought to myself. No. Until I like uh, watch his con <clears throat> until I watch his content, um, I would uh, probably get a shirt probably. But until then, I was gonna wait until I watched his content and stuff. But I actually uh, asked him a question. And for any YouTube content creator, if you see me, and by see me, if you recognize a hat and everything, you will be asked this question too. Um, so I asked him the question, uh, as a content creator, uh, I'm sure you've went through a lot of stuff in your time. Uh, and I asked him, what was your personal favorite part of doing this? And what is the most challenging, or aka your least favorite thing about doing this? I, I asked him that, and he said that, um, he said one of the most funnest things about what he does is that he actually gets to write the entire script itself. Well, technically... He has a video and everything like that of the Yu-Gi-Oh! show and stuff like that. He's working on a blank script, rewriting the whole story, rewriting the character's dialogue and stuff like that. And he said the fun part about it is, is that you're writing basically a parody story of content that has previously, previously have already been worked on. And he said that that's like the funnest thing because you get to come up with like different lines of dialogue. You get to come up with like different scenarios. You get to like recreate the character. It's sort of like a fan service, if you will. A fan service. And it was just... <clears throat> it was fun for him to, like, rewrite the whole story and rewrite these individual characters with different personalities and stuff. And he, he said he had so much fun with it. And I can definitely understand that. Being able to do stuff like that is a lot of fun, I would say. Uh, the only reason why I haven't done that is because I personally can't write a script. Uh, because every single time I write a script, I'll look through it, and then I'll realize that I don't like it. At the same time, he, too, has went through the same scenarios as well, 
but to a point where since he's done this for so long and everything, he's used to it now. It, it doesn't really bother him that if the first draft doesn't work, it won't be uh, the main draft. He'll work on a different one and a different one until he finally finds one that is what he likes, you know. Um, but then he pointed out something that I kind of knew, but I didn't realize it would be that big of an effect. Um, he said the worst thing that he hated about doing what he did, what he does anyway, um, is the fact that unlike a television show, uh, television broadcasting, they actually have like post-production type thing. They have it all ahead of stuff. But even if they get behind, there's this, like, invisible wall. There's this wall that no one actually gets to go through. First it's, like, the fans, the viewers, and then you got the uh, creator themselves, you know, with regular TV shows and stuff on cable and satellite. Um, there's this wall, and wa it's, like, they're waiting for, like, the next video, but they can't say anything because they have no direct form of contact or social media status of that particular content creator. So it's like they're able to avoid it altogether. Now as for like what we all do, you know, me, Little Kribo, and other content creators on YouTube and stuff like that, we don't really have that wall. We have, you know, YouTube con comments, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have uh, Instagram, we have a huge following that we still have to, you know, go on every day and stuff like that. And it's like if we don't release a video and notify people about it or, like, tell them what's going on and stuff, they start to get antsy. They wonder, it's like, well, why can't you release a video next week? Or, like, why can't you do this or that and stuff like that? What they don't realize is that those particular content creators, like Little Kribo, they have to go through an entire step of like script writing and then editing and sometimes the editing and Delmar can tell you because he's done like a little test project of it um it can take a long time just to get it mashed up like you have to match the line of, of voice movement to match up with the line of dialogue that you have created yourself it takes a lot of work it really does like I kid you not whenever I say this uh for Delmar to do what he did I think that video is like a two or three minute long video just to do that long of a time takes like a good day and a half for him and that's uh, with recording the audio and everything the script writing and everything like that and the editing of the video it takes a long time to do stuff like that and the funny thing is people don't realize how long it does take and when it does take that long uh, you're going to meet uh, a point where you're going to miss the deadline and stuff. Of your deadline, rather. And it, it is not easy to keep up with content like that. It really isn't. And with Little Kribo, he said that it's hard to kind of like avoid stuff like that because it's going to be there regardless of what you do, you know. You're going to have people comment on like, why can't you release this video next week? Or why did you miss it next week? Or so on and so forth. And... Comments like that do slow you down, he said. Those type of comments will slow you down to a point to where you would almost give up on it. But it's like the biggest thing that you can do is to not give up. Because if you enjoy this uh, thing that you're doing, whether it's like uh, making anime videos or like doing parody dubs or like uh, let's plays, discussion videos, whatever videos you're doing... Whatever it is, don't let the comments drag you down. If the comments are depressing, don't let them drag you down. Just do what you think you can and move on from there, you know. As much as we would love to please everybody, we can't technically do that. We are by nature human, so therefore we can't do it all. As much as we would love to, it's not that easy. And I just, it's hearing that from him directly that made me realize that there's more to being a content creator than I thought. And keep in mind, I mostly do discussion videos and less plays. Um, what he does is actually a lot harder, you know. He actually has to, like, 
create the line of dialogue, he has to do the voice acting, and then the editing of video, and he actually has a small group of people of, like, I think he said he had, like, seven or eight people that he has that works underneath him doing the whole, uh, a bridge thing, and I'm like, wow. He actually has that many people working on it. So it's not just, like, it's not just him, but at the same time, it's not, like, a big group of people, you know, you have to realize that that particular stuff is not easy to do. It, and especially whenever you're working with content that has been done previously. I imagine stuff like that is even harder because of, like, you know, different broadcast station, different directors, different, like, social media status and stuff like that. You have to fight through all of that. And then on top of that, you have the individual commenters themselves, the individual fans, the individual viewers and stuff. And that can slow you down, but the biggest thing is to never let that drag you down. And I really appreciate getting to meet him, and I'm really glad that I got a chance to actually hear what he had to say about what he does. And it just, it's really cool, I thought. It, I really love being able to meet him. And little Karibo, if I ever get a chance to meet you, I would love to get a chance to talk to you again, as well as your wife. Um... So, but anyway, though, that's going to be it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoy this, and if you want to check out his content, by sh all means, please do. I will try to put the link of his channel in the description below for you guys. So anyway, though, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. This is Black Cross signing off. Take care, guys.